my channel. So today for you guys, I have some Dollar Tree Kitchen organizational hacks and DIYs to share with you. This is a collaboration with All Things Crafty here on YouTube. Her name is Melissa. She's super talented. I asked her to do a little intro to her channel so you guys can get a peek at what she does. Hey bargain family, my name is Melissa from All Things Crafty here on YouTube where I love to do all things crafty on a budget. Farmhouse decor is my specialty, so I love to take Dollar Tree items and turn them into extremely high-end farmhouse decor and much more. So if that's right up your alley, then I would love if you would come check out my channel. For this collaboration, we both decided to recreate one of each other's DIYs. So I was inspired by this shelf that she made and you'll see my version of it in this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out All Things Crafty. Again, she'll be linked below down for you guys. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and click the bell button so you're notified every single time that I upload. With that being said, let's begin the video. Our first DIY is great for storing the bags that you get from the store that you try to reuse. Lots of times they just end up underneath our sinks. I got a great DIY for this. From Dollar Tree, you'll be picking up one of the over the cabinet towel bars and then a trash can. What you'll do is you'll take the bar, place it on the back of the trash can and then get something sharp like a utility knife and create three slices underneath that bar. It's not too hard to do as long as you have a nice sharp blade. You can find utility knives box cutters at Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to be using some of the Dollar Tree zip ties to tie the bar to the trash can. I take my zip ties and I feed them through the slices that I made. I ended up using four zip ties total. I now go ahead and tie the bar in place. So I just hold it in place, get my first zip tie on, and then I'm able to let go of the bar and zip the rest of the ties. Make sure you pull them nice and tight, then go ahead and cut off any excess zip tie. I top this off with a vinyl that I cut out using my Cricut that said bags. Dollar Tree does carry font stickers that you can use and stencils as well. Just hang this on your cabinet door and now you have an underneath the sink bag organizer for just $3. What's great about this is it doesn't take up space underneath the sink on the shelf that's there. You save that for your cleaning supplies. For our next DIY, I'm going to be using these wooden crates from Dollar Tree. Now this crate has slats, so basically there's a bunch of gaps within the slats of wood. Dollar Tree also carries these wooden crates. They're larger and they don't have those slats of wood. I would have preferred to use these, but I didn't have enough of them on hand. What I did is I took 10 crates and I glued them together. I had two rows that included five crates in each row. When I glued them, I used wood glue from Dollar tree and some hot glue. Wood glue is going to adhere the wooden crates nicely so they don't fall apart and the hot glue is just going to make it easier so you don't have to wait 24 hours for this thing to completely dry. I recycled some of the crates that I had previously used in some DIYs so that's why a couple of the ones you see are already stained. When it comes to the Dollar Tree wood crates, no two are alike. So before I glue everything side by side, I kind of line them up where I get similar ones next to each other and then I glue them to each other. The next step is to paint or stain your wood. I'm using Min Wax Wood Finish in Dark Walnut. The reason I said I prefer the other crates versus these ones is because it's harder to paint or stain these crates because there are so many gaps so you have to get inside of every nook and cranny of these crates whereas the other one doesn't have gaps so it's much easier to paint or stain. Now I'm going to be using some paint stir sticks that I got from Walmart for 98 cents. I prefer to use these versus the Dollar Tree rulers because it's cheaper to get these and they're much longer. I'm going to be cutting two pieces down to fit the bottom and the middle parts of my shelf. I used a handsaw to cut through them just enough and then I took a pair of scissors and cut through the rest. The handsaw just kind of got a starter for me and then the scissor finished up the job. Now go ahead and paint or stain your sticks. Once the sticks have dried, you can go ahead and glue them to your shelf. Now I used hot glue to do this, but I do recommend using wood glue. Now I'm going to be using some little chalkboard signs that I got from Dollar Tree. Now I had two packs of the chalkboard wood stakes that I was able to find at Dollar Tree. I went ahead and removed the stake off of the back of those. Now I lay out all of my little chalkboard pieces. Once I had them placed where I want them to be, I then go ahead and just glue them directly onto the sticks. 
I'm going to be putting spices inside of this. So I ended up cutting out some vinyl pieces on my Cricut to have the name of the spices. You can always use a chalk marker to do this. Dollar Tree does carry chalk markers. A great option to store some of your spices from Dollar Tree are these small little mason jars with handles. They have ones that have little holes at the top to pour out your spices and ones that have closed lids. I love this piece for storing and organizing spices. You can put this on top of a counter. You can also hang this to your wall. You just gotta get some wall hangers or just drill this directly into the wall as long as you're hitting some studs. This hack I shared on my channel recently, but it's too good not to share again, especially if you haven't seen it yet. From Dollar Tree, you just wanna pick up one of their wall mount hooks. You're gonna find it in the hardware section. It comes with drywall screws and drywall screw anchors. We used our own anchors because the ones that they come with are huge. And just for $1, you have a coffee mug rack holder, whatever you want to call it, that's hanging off of the wall. You're able to clear out some space inside of your dish cabinet and have a nice $1 decor piece while at it. You can place this near a coffee bar and I feel like it adds so much to the coffee bar. For one buck, you're able to do this. And if you put a picture over it, it looks even better. Our next DIY is inspired by Teresa Beatty. I will link her website down below for you guys. From Dollar Tree, you want to pick up one of their wire waste baskets. What you'll do is push in the bottom of the waste basket. It's really easy to do, not hard at all. Just push it in. And then you're going to push out right above where you just pushed in. And you are just going to make the shape of a coffee mug. It's very easy to do. It's easy to mold. It's not like you need a lot of strength to do this. For the handle of my mug, I am gonna be using this garden fence from Dollar Tree. I went ahead and I cut off some of the designs that are on that arch. Teresa Beatty made her handle differently. She still used a Dollar Tree wire basket. So make sure you check her out. Again, her website will be linked in the description box below so you can see different ways that you can create the handle for your little mug. I decided to paint the garden fence with a more matte black paint. The finish of the garden fence is kind of like a shimmery black. I wanted it to be more matte. Now I use some hot glue to glue on one of the handles. Once I have that one glued to the wire basket, I glue the other piece directly on the back of the initial handle. Then I go ahead and take my black paint, finish this off, and then I use some zip ties from Dollar Tree to really attach that to the wire basket. I didn't want this thing to move and with just one slight movement, the handles come crashing down because there's not a lot of surface for the glue to adhere to. So by adding the zip ties, it prevents the handles from just falling off. Let's add some decorative finishes. I got these metal tags from Dollar Tree. I went ahead and painted one of the metal tags with some black paint. There was still metal showing through it, which still adds a nice touch to me. It comes with some twine so I used the twine to attach that to the waste basket. I then glued one of these chalkboard tags to the front of my coffee mug. I used my Cricut again to cut out some vinyl that said K-Cups and I attached that on top of the chalkboard. Remember Dollar Tree carries stencils, stickers, markers, so many other things that you can use if you do not have a Cricut. I just like using the Cricut because it looks much better than anything I would write with my own hand. As you can tell by the wording on the front of this basket, it is a K-cup holder. So rather than just having your K-cups laying inside of a drawer or a box somewhere, you could throw them inside of this thing and they're nice and easy to pick out of the basket. As long as I guess you have the same flavor, if you're putting multiple flavors inside of this, you're gonna have to dig for the flavor that you want. For our next project from Dollar Tree, you wanna pick up their toilet plungers. We're gonna be using the wooden handle of the toilet plunger. I kinda of did the math and you can get a wooden dowel somewhere else cheaper if you like. To two of those handles, I had my husband cut off just the end of it where you could see those little weird crevices through it. To the other two pieces, I had my husband cut them down to around eight inches in length you can do this with a handsaw if you want to but i didn't want to uh, if if my husband has the tool right there ready to go i'm gonna let him cut him i'm creating a little ladder so i take some wood glue and my hot glue and i start to glue on the steps of the ladder before gluing on any of the steps i make sure i get them in the right place then i glue them down i add my wood glue first then my hot glue. Just like before, I'm gluing the pieces of wood on this way 
because wood glue takes forever to dry. So I used a hot glue to move this process along more quickly. I'll show you two ideas for the ladder. You can get these little wire baskets from Dollar Tree and you can attach them to the steps of the ladder if you want to. So before I glued on my bottom step, I figured out where I wanted to place that basket and then I glue on the bottom step. I wanted to make sure that there was enough space between the two steps where the basket wouldn't get in the way. Now I'm gonna paint my ladder. I just used acrylic paint for this. It's Chocolate Sprinkle by Apple Barrel. I would have preferred to actually stain it. I love staining wood. I just didn't have enough time this day. Once this is painted and dried, I took some zip ties from Dollar Tree, the black zip ties, and I attached my basket. I use three zip ties total. Now I wanted my basket to hang low a little bit, so I made my basket where it would be bottom heavy. I didn't perfectly center the basket to that step. If you wanted to have the weight distribute it more evenly you need to center it perfectly to that step and you want to add a bunch of zip ties back in the day when i made my first ever dollar tree ladder i used rope to make a design on the sides of the ladder i decided to do that again so i got some decorative nautical rope from dollar tree and i'm just creating a crisscross design where the steps of the ladder meet the sides of the ladder i just wrap it around cut it down and then use my hot glue to glue it in place now, I don't recommend putting anything too heavy in the basket, especially if you only are using one basket, unless you attach the ladder to the wall. You're going to lean the ladder against your wall, but if you attach it to the wall, you can put, you know, heavy things inside of the baskets. If you don't attach it to the wall and you put heavy things inside of the basket, obviously one side of the ladder is going to be more heavy and then it's just going to fall over. So I put some K-cups inside of the basket and a dish towel. That's one option you can go with. What I'm using my ladder for is to hold dish towels. So it's kind of like a blanket ladder, except with dish towels and it's on the miniature side. You can just use this as a decorative piece if you want to. There are a lot of uses for this ladder. Our next project, I'm gonna be using one of these decorative cutting boards. You can get an actual cutting board from Dollar Tree if you cannot find the decorative one. Now I took some Dollar Tree rulers, removed the little stickers that have the inches off of them, and then I stained them. I stained them using Varathane Stain in Early American. I then take my rulers and place them on top of the cutting board. I'll be cutting both of my rulers down to fit the width of the cutting board. The Dollar Tree ruler's wood is very thin, so I just use some sharp scissors to cut the wood. If you're going to use scissors like I did, you just want to slowly cut the wood so that it doesn't split on For you. this DIY, I will also be using some removable hooks that I purchased from Dollar Tree. This has a wood finish, so I decided to go with these ones. I did remove the backing that is hanging down on the bottom of these hooks. Now what I'm doing is gluing a ruler over the top portion of that image that's in front of the cutting board i tried to remove the little tacks that are inside of there they're decorative and when i was trying to remove them it started to peel the image that's on the front so i decided not to do that so i just glued directly over those tacks i glued the second ruler to the very bottom of the cutting board I then took the hooks and I glue those on top of the ruler. You can just directly attach the hooks with the adhesive that's already on the back of them to the ruler, but I feel like the adhesive on the back of the hooks isn't the best. So by adding that hot glue with the mix of that adhesive, I know that these hooks aren't just gonna fall down. Now I decided to use some white chalk paint to paint over the image on my cutting board. I'm gonna be using print paper over this and I didn't want the font and the picture of the carrots to show through the printing paper. My plan originally was to keep the faux wood look that was on the cutting board showing just the way that it was. After gluing on the rulers and then painting this one part white, I thought the faux wood looked funny. So I decided to paint it to a color that is similar to the color that was on the rulers. And I feel like this looks better than the way it did before. Now I ended up getting this image from Etsy for $1. I'll link the seller down below for you guys, but it's just kitchen conversions. So I printed that out, cut it down, and then glued that on top of the cutting board. 
Now I stick some command strips to the back of the cutting board and I stick that to one of my cabinets. This is a great way to hang and store measuring cups, measuring spoons. Measuring cups tend to take up a lot of space in your utensil drawer, so this helps clear up the utensil drawer and have those pieces nicely organized within your cabinet. For our next DIY, I purchased this planter from Dollar Tree. They have a bunch of different ones you can choose from with different colors. I ended up painting this black, and I'm just using a black acrylic paint that I got from Walmart for 50 cents. This DIY is inspired by Jay Mooney. I'm gonna link her down below for you guys. She does a bunch of Dollar Tree DIYs and she does hauls. Please check her out. But this DIY she did, I think a couple of years back ago and so many people recreated it. So since it's one of those DIYs that has been recreated so many times, I feel like it's hard to know who really came up with it. And 100%, I feel like she did. Even if she wasn't the first person to ever do it, I know she was one of the first and her tutorial is what made this DIY so popular. So if you've ever seen the Dollar Tree DIY scale, know that Jay Mooney probably played a part in that thing happening. Anyways, now I'm going to be taking a glass bowl that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm gluing it to the top. I recommend getting a big bowl. I mean, the bigger the better. This is the biggest one I could find at the Dollar Tree I went to. Now I got this plate from Dollar Tree and this image from Google. I got it from craftygossip.com. I went to Google Images. I typed in antique food scale front weight and it was literally the only picture that popped up that wasn't the entire scale it's actually really hard to find just the front of the scale you'll be able to find pictures of the entire thing and you could print that out and just cut out the front part but i went this route because that way i didn't have to waste ink printing out the rest of the scale i ended up painting the plate black at first i didn't know what direction i was going in so i slowly painted it black and then eventually i was like okay it's gonna be all black before I entirely finished painting the entire plate, I grabbed it from the corner that had no paint yet and then I glued that to the front of my planter and then I finished painting it. And now I have this fake scale that I made for $3. I'm using mine as a fruit holder. I was actually able to hold four bananas, two apples, and one lemon. And the bowl that I have, I would consider a smaller bowl. Dollar Tree does carry bigger bowls, like I said, you just gotta be able to find For our them. next hack, we're gonna be using this over the door hook. Dollar Tree carries this black one and they also carry a white one that has more hooks. Now what I'm gonna be doing is removing the hook part. And all you have to do to remove it is bend the metal back and forth. You're gonna keep bending it back and forth, back and forth until it snaps. Now this metal is actually very sturdy, so it takes a little while before you can snap it. I had to put my foot on it to hold it down as I try to bend it back and forth to snap it. If I can do it, you can do it. The white one Dollar Tree carries, it's so easy to snap the hooks off. Now I'm gonna be using these clear self-adhesive hooks from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna be using them to hold that metal piece up. So before I attach it directly to my wall, I figure out where I want the hook to be placed, and then I put one hook on at a time to make sure that the metal piece isn't all slanted. I used three clear hooks total. I started with the middle piece, then I moved onto one end and then the other end. I'm gonna use this to hold oven mitts and pot holders. I will link an organizational video I uploaded recently on my channel down below for you guys. I have a small kitchen and you'll be able to see it in that video. So I did a lot of organization using Dollar Tree products. So I look forward to using items from Dollar Tree like this that can go on my wall and clear out one of my cabinets. For decoration, I got a Dollar Tree wood plank and I painted it black. I added a Cricut vinyl piece again that I cut out, it says mitts, and then I glued that between uh, where there's like two rows of hooks. You can technically just use the clear adhesive hooks to hang up your mitts if you want to, but I wanted to do it this way. I like the whole black metal, gives me farmhouse vibes. This could hold a lot of oven mitts. I love it because it clears out one of my cabinets that has a bunch of oven mitts inside of it. It's perfect for my small kitchen and it looks nice. 
Next up, I love these organizing pieces from Dollar Tree. They are stacking glass jars. The first couple of times you open and close the lid, some of the plastic on the lid comes off. So you want to mess around with it till no more plastic is coming off before you place any food inside of these glass jars. Now I used my Cricut yet again to cut out some vinyl pieces that I am going to put on the front of my jars. You do not again need a Cricut to do something like this. Dollar Tree does carry so many different items you can use instead of these vinyl pieces. I own a Cricut, so I'm going to take advantage of what I own and I'm going to use it. Other options from Dollar Tree would be getting their chalkboard stickers. You can place that over the glass and then get one of their chalkboard markers and just write out the contents of whatever you're going to be putting inside of these glasses on the chalkboard. It doesn't just have to be food that you place inside of these. You can put glue sticks, you can put paper clips. There's so many different options, but I decided to store nuts inside of these. I think these are great organizing pieces for inside of your cabinet because of the stacking aspect. They're not too big and then they stack on top of each other which makes it easy for storing goods. Now let's make a Lazy Susan. From Dollar Tree, you can buy a Lazy Susan already done. It's just a white turntable. It has wheels at the bottom and it turns around, but we want to decorate this thing a little bit. I purchased a cake pan from Dollar Tree. I painted it all white and I'm going to decorate it with some ribbon. I picked up some burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree as well as some of their rope. And I used both of these things to decorate the cake pan as well as the turntable. I used hot glue to glue on the ribbon, then I attached the cake pan to the top of the turntable. After that, I brought out my decorative nautical rope that's also from Dollar Tree, and I used that to kind of cover up the area of the Lazy Susan that was still showing so that the cake pan and the Lazy Susan all just became one. And there you have a Lazy Susan with that beautiful farmhouse look that you can use to store, again, some more spices or olive oil, things of that nature. That's it for these Dollar Tree kitchen DIYs and hacks. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, please make sure you check out all things Crafty Melissa. I'll have her link down below for you guys. You can check out her video and her channel. She does really awesome projects. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.